Hi and welcome to Embedded Systems course, Prototyping with Arduino Uno. In this video, we are going to explore the Arduino Uno board, show you how to download, configure, and use the Arduino IDE, and finally, we'll test the Uno board by uploading sample Arduino program. Arduino Uno is just one of the boards designed at the Ivrea Interaction Design Institute. It was initially intended for students without in-depth background in electronics and programming. But over the years, Arduino boards has been used to build thousands of projects from simple daily objects to compound scientific instruments. There are other Arduino boards like the LilyPad Arduino, which are commonly used for wearable projects due to its small size and lightweight. The Arduino Mega if you want more digital and analog I.O. with bigger program capacity. There is also the Arduino Leonardo and Arduino Redboard. Now, to clarify things, Arduino is not a microcontroller, although the term Arduino microcontroller is widely adopted. But Arduino is an open source platform that consists of both a physical programmable circuit board, this is often referred to as the microcontroller, and a piece of software, the Integrated Development Environment or IDE, that runs on your computer, used to write and upload computer code to the physical board. So let us explore and familiarize the important parts of the Arduino Uno board that we are going to use all throughout this course. The USB port is used to load a program from the Arduino IDE onto the Arduino board. The board can also be powered through this port. The power port can power the Arduino board through an easy-to-DC adapter or a battery. The power source can be connected by plugging in a 2.1mm center positive plug into the power jack of the board. Although the Arduino Uno board operates at 5 volts, but it can withstand a maximum voltage of 20 volts. If the board is supplied with a higher voltage, there is a voltage regulator that protects the board from burning out. And then of course, the brain of the Arduino board, the Atmega 328E by Atmel. This microcontroller is pre-programmed with bootloader. This allows you to directly upload a new Arduino program into the device without using any external hardware programmer, making the Arduino Uno board easy to use. The six analog input pins, labeled analog 0 to 5, these pins can read a signal from an analog sensor like a temperature sensor and convert it into a digital value so that the system can understand. These pins read voltage and not current because they have very high internal resistance. Thus, only a small amount of current flows through these pins. Although these pins are labeled analog and are analog input by default, these pins can also be used for digital input and output. The digital pins labeled digital 0 to 13 can be used as either input or output pins. When used as output, these pins can supply 40 mA of current at 5 volts, which is more than enough to light an LED. But when used as an input, they read the signals from the component connected to them like a switch. Some of the digital pins are labeled with tilde symbol next to the pin numbers. Pin numbers 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. These pins behave as normal digital pins but can also be used for pulse width modulation or PWM which simulates analog output. The reset switch, when clicked, sends a logical pulse to the reset pin of the microcontroller and restarts the running program. The power indicator LED, the transmit and receive indicator LEDs, which blinks whenever the UNO board is transmitting or receiving data. The built-in pin 13 LED, which is directly connected to the digital pin 13 of the board. And the power pins. It consists of the V-in or input voltage to Arduino when using an external power source. The 5 volt regulated power supply used to power the microcontroller and the other components on the board the 3.3 volt supply generated by onboard voltage regulator, maximum current draw is 50 mA, and the ground pins. To download the Arduino software, open your browser and go to www.arduino.cc and click on the software tab, then downloads. At the top, you will see the Arduino web editor where you can write your code online. But what we are going to use is the Arduino IDE that needs to be downloaded and installed on your local machine so that it can run offline. The software is available for either Windows, Mac OS, and Linux operating systems. Choose one that suits you. 
At the time of this recording, the latest version is 1.8.13. To install it on Windows 7 or higher, click this link. You can either click the Contribute and Download to support the continuous improvement of this product, or click the Just Download link to start downloading the installer. The installer is about 111 MB, and once you finish the download, simply click and run the installer. This is fairly straightforward. It opens the license agreement that you need to agree, of course, then followed by the installation option to select what components to install, leave it all checked by default, You'll notice that the installation file size requires 535 MB of disk space. Then, click Next. It will show you the default installation folder which is located at Program Files x86 backslash Arduino. You can browse for a different location if you want to. And finally, click Install. I will not continue the installation in this video as I have already installed it in my computer. Once you finish the installation, you can launch it right away from this desktop shortcut icon created. And as you can see, the IDE is almost bare and simple. But before we start writing any code, we need to set up the Arduino Uno board first. So, go to the Tools menu, and then select Board, and make sure to select Arduino slash Genuino Uno, as there are plenty of different types of boards here to choose from. Now, you can see that the port is currently disabled, it is because I don't have any serial communication device attached to my computer at this point. So I am going to connect my Arduino Uno board to my computer's USB port. And as you can see, the power LED of the board turns on. Now, even though you have plugged it in already, if the software doesn't detect it, you need to close the instance of the current IDE and relaunch it. But before I do that, I need to check the communication port setting first. Right-click on the Windows Start button and click Device Manager. Then click on Ports. You should see there your connected devices. You can have several Arduino boards attached to the same computer via USB cable. In my case, I only have one right now and the current communication port it is using is COM3. Yours could be different. It could be COM4, COM5, COM6, and so on. Now, let us relaunch our Arduino IDE and click on the Tools menu. Make sure that the port number you selected here is the one configured in your device manager. Mine is COM3 and it's good. To test if our board is working, meaning we can upload a program to it and it should respond accordingly. Click on the file menu, select examples, basics, and choose the blink program. And a new instance of your Arduino IDE opens. And if you have noticed, this IDE already includes several example programs to get you started right away. I will not discuss this code for the meantime, although if you have background in C and Java programming, this code definitely looks familiar. So just click on this right arrow button here that says Upload, and you will see that your IDE is starting to compile your code. In Arduino, your program is called a sketch. After the compilation, you will see it uploading, and if everything is good, you'll see a message done uploading. So, you notice that with these simple lines of code, we already consume 928 bytes or 2% of our 32 kilobyte flash memory. And congratulations, your Arduino board is now running your first program. You can verify it by checking if the built-in LED connected to pin 13 is blinking with a 1 second interval. And that's it! If your board is working properly, we can now start learning how to write program in Arduino. In the next video, we're going to learn Arduino programming by understanding the code structure, syntax, variable declaration, and do some circuit connections to work with the digital output pins. Again, thanks for watching. And if you feel you learned something of value here, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more programming and circuit tutorials. See you in the next video.